Here's a guy who always has a handle on things, and by the way, he seems to have a handle on the podcasting trade. It is our friend, uh, Senator Ted Cruz. Morning, Senator. How are you doing? Mark, good morning. Good to be with you. It is nice to have you. Let, let's sort of go in, in pressing order of urgency. Uh, is this thing over by nightfall in the impeachment drama? Well, it won't be over by nightfall tonight, but I think there's a very good chance it'll be over by nightfall tomorrow. Uh, so, so we have Actually, to... let me modify that. Yeah, go ahead. By the end of tomorrow, which may be late into the night. I did, nightfall itself, <laughs> okay. I, I don't expect a dusk, but, yeah, but, but exactly. I think there's a good chance that by the time we walk out of the Senate chamber tomorrow, it will be over. Whatever time that is. So what lies between now and then? When will the actual Senate vote where we'll learn that Lamar Alexander has done the right thing, that Mitt Romney and Susan Collins, well, we'll talk about what's right and what's not, but when will that actual Senate vote occur? So we're going to return in session at 1 o'clock under the Senate rules. That, that's when we convene every day. Mm-hmm. So it'll be 1 o'clock, 1 o'clock today. And we move now to a vote on whether it, it is in order for the Senate to take up additional witnesses and additional document, documentary evidence. Right. Gotcha. And, that, and that's, that's an up-down vote. Um, both sides have, I believe, two hours to argue it, oh uh, which means – The first four hours will be two hours of the House managers saying everything they've been saying for the past week and a half. Right. (laughs) Uh, And then hopefully two hours of of the president's counsel explaining why you have more than enough evidence that we've heard 17 witnesses the House had, plus one more, the inspector general that they refused to transmit over. So 18 witnesses counting that. And the House case, the House managers have not proven their case. As a matter of law, they haven't proven their case. And so we should move to final judgment. After that that argument ends, then we'll vote. And um, I I think it is now very, very likely that the House Democrats will lose that vote, which means we will not be taking additional witnesses uh, or extending the trial weeks or months into the future. And if indeed Lamar Alexander has achieved clarity, and we're not going to flip a Cory Gardner or a Martha McSally, which I don't believe is going to happen, it then suddenly doesn't matter what uh, Murkowski, Collins, or Romney would do. But I want to know, I, I, I crave your understanding. I think Governor Romney, bless his heart, is lost. Uh, Susan Collins is in Maine, which is kind of like being lost. It is and, and Lisa Murkowski, I don't even know. Do you believe it's possible, because I know things like this happen, is it possible that Mitch McConnell has counted the numbers, knows it's in the bag, and has given Senator Collins free reign to vote for witnesses because it might help her keep that seat in Maine? Uh, you know, I don't know that I would put it exactly that way, but you know, the, the, the numbers in the Senate, as you put it, they're, they're 53 Republicans, 47 Democrats. Uh, what... What the Democrats are hoping is that four Republicans will join with the 47 Democrats to give them a majority, to give them 51. In terms of public announcements, Mitt Romney has already said he is going to vote yes. He's going to join with the Democrats. So that's one, and and I don't think Mitt is moving from that. Susan Collins has also said that, that she's going to vote yes. She's going to vote for the Democrats. So that takes them to 49. In terms of Susan, I, I wouldn't as much say that, that that leadership gave her a pass, but I do think everyone understands Maine is a really tough state, and how she votes is is an issue between her and her constituents. Uh, you know, I, I will say, Susan, look, look, Susan's voting record is much, much, much more moderate than mine. Uh, but but I but I do respect that 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 she doesn't run telling her constituents something different than how she votes. Right. So, for example, Su- Susan was one of the votes uh, against repealing Obamacare. As, as you know, there's nothing I put more time and blood and sweat and tears into yeah. than that battle. I actually was not angry with Susan for her vote against it because Susan didn't campaign in Maine saying she was going to repeal Obamacare. She never promised the voters elect me and I'll repeal Obamacare. She said she never said that. And so if you're honest with your voters, I I think you're doing your job. And then it's up to the voters to decide, Okay, what what do I want you to to fight for? Makes sense. So we're fresh off of Senator's question time, which was fairly predictable, but had some interesting moments. Yep. Should Chief Justice Roberts have read... But by the way, i got to say, the most interesting moment of the entire question time yes. was the very last three minutes of it. Because uh, the last moment, 
the last question was was from Amy Klobuchar. Number one, Amy, Amy, who is a friend, but she screwed it up and wasn't able to submit the card right, didn't fill in her name on it, and had to come down and like hurriedly rush it, write it in on the card, Whoops. which was a very amusing way to end. Right. Uh, and her question was, can the Dems please give a quick closing argument? I mean, it's just... <laughs> That's awesome. And I, I, I actually, I told this story halfway and I never finished it an hour ago. This may be telling. Amy Klobuchar has an event in Iowa on Monday morning. But so we'll, we'll, read, from, we'll read from that what we will. But speaking of reading things. But, should... but, but, but hold, hold on, Mark. Uh, I, I got to say all right, the go funniest ahead. piece. So when the closing argument opened up, Adam Schiff stood up and started walking to, to the podium. Yep. And Jerry Nadler ran from behind him, Yep, pushed him out of the way. It was awesome. And stepped to the podium, and the look on Schiff's face, he wanted to strangle Nadler. He stood behind him for about five, ten seconds just glaring and, like, not sure what to do. And then he just sat down. And I got to say, on both sides, both Republicans and, Sen- and Democratic senators were cracking up. <laughs> At the two of them almost getting in a fifth fight for who could give the closing argument. An actual moment of authenticity. Well, Rand Paul had an authentic question. It mentioned uh, the whistleblower by name without identifying him as the whistleblower. Should Chief Justice Roberts have read that question? I think he should have. I, I think it was a mistake to refuse to read that question. But but there are prerogatives of being Chief Justice, and we just saw one of them. Yeah, and, and I think it's it, it concerned me because uh, listen, I, I, Chief Justice Roberts lives to not upset the apple cart. I think that's what informed, if you can use that term, his bad Obamacare vote. He voted right on Obergefell versus Hodges on gay marriage. Uh, yep. You know, I mean, so but I, I don't think he wants to go down in history as the guy who tilted things politically. Uh, if, if, it made me wonder if we did get to witnesses, would Chief Justice Roberts allow the whistleblower to be sworn in, or would he blockade that too? Well, uh, he wouldn't really be able to do that because if if we went down the road to witnesses, all all of those decisions would be made by the body, would be made by fifty one senators, um, and so he wouldn't be able to block. If there were 51 senators to call the whistleblower, we'd call the whistleblower. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, and, the, and the chief the chief has no constitutional authority to, to contravene that. Last thing on impeachment, and then let's talk very seriously about China and what we need to be doing on an issue that really matters to people. Yeah. yeah. Please tell me. Lord knows, we, you know, heaven forbid we get to that. History will start to write the story of this impeachment the moment it's over. And I've talked to a couple of folks who say, you know, it's great to wrap it up quickly. Is there the slightest downside that that history will view, however inaccurately, that this was the impeachment that was done, quote unquote, without witnesses because the Republicans would not permit them? Well, of course, history will view it that way because history professors are all liberals. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's how they'll write the history books. Um, But. To be honest, they were going to write the history books that this was a travesty of justice, no matter what happened, because their view, as long as Donald Trump is acquitted, for the hard left, it's a travesty of justice. So the only outcome that would be acceptable would be convicting him and removing him from office, which they knew from when this began, the chances of that were zero. And and so it is not correct to say there were no witnesses. There were, there were 18 witnesses. We heard We heard – hours and hours and days of evidence and testimony and, and, and arguments, we, we gave both sides a full and fair opportunity to present their case, much more than the House did. The House blocked out the minority witnesses, blocked out the White House, refused to hear the other side of the evidence. That was not the case here in the Senate. It was fair. We respected due process. But we also addressed the legal issue before the Senate, which is whether the president has committed high crimes or misdemeanors. And the central issue that resolves this case is that the president always has the authority and, in fact, the responsibility to investigate credible evidence of corruption. And in this case, there was more than enough evidence of corruption concerning Burisma, the corrupt Ukrainian company that was paying Hunter Biden, Joe Biden's son, a million bucks a year while Joe Biden was the point person for the administration on Ukraine and while Joe Biden blackmailed, threatened to threaten to cut off a billion dollars in foreign aid to Ukraine unless they fired the prosecutor yeah. who was prosecuting Burisma, the company that was paying his son a million bucks a year. That's more than enough to investigate. I, can I pl- prove conclusively that Joe Biden was corrupt? No. 
but that's more than sufficient to investigate that question because I got to say that fact pattern stinks. It raises enormous question on its face. It suggests very real corruption. The president asked that it be investigated, and that was perfectly legitimate. Therefore, the president did not commit high crimes or misdemeanors, and it cannot be removed from office. That's the straightforward legal basis and the reason the president will be acquitted tomorrow. And that's what I've shared with all my friends who said, oh, but witnesses could have been cool. Yeah, as much political theater and delightful moments on Fox as it would have been to have Hunter Biden or the whistleblower. Look, just let's let's, let's get on with the rest of our lives. Literally two minutes. Yeah. Senator Cruz with us. I've called for days already, uh, and I'm not the smartest guy in the room. Why in the world is one plane landing from China in the United States right now? I'm not talking about for a year, but until we get seem to get a handle on this, is that exactly what you have called for a travel ban and increased airport screening by the way to be fair and i've been to your studio i think right now you're the only guy in the room That's right. exactly so by def- <laughs> by definition <laughs> by definition Sorry, Mark, I, I couldn't uh, resist but that. oh boy you, they catch him on the podcast everybody <laughs> uh yes you're right uh look this coronavirus is real it's serious it's dangerous we're still learning how infectious it is we're still learning uh, the lethality of it, but but we shouldn't be taking a risk with a potential pandemic. Uh, I've called this morning for for the the government to ground flights between the United States and China. Uh, that's a serious step. We have a lot of economic ties with with China, but when you're dealing with the spread uh, of an epidemic, the first step is to contain it. This should be hopefully a temporary halt. But we need to make sure that we're not putting people in contact with a deadly virus that could spread in the United States and and that could take a lot of American lives. All right. The conservative wisdom and sometimes the comedy stylings of Ted Cruz on that Verdict with Ted Cruz podcast. He's the Adam Carolla of the Senate. It's on Spotify. It's everywhere. Congratulations on that. And thank you, sir, for your guidance and leadership. Let's talk again soon with impeachment in the rearview mirror. How about it? I appreciate it. Thanks, Mark. God bless. Senator Ted Cruz.